live from New York. It's Ask an Engineer and a, a Deputy <laughs> Editor for Popular Mechanics. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting and fantastic uh, Ask an Engineer. We've got a great show today with a special guest. It's me, uh, Lady Ada, the engineer. I'm always here, I'm not very special. Uh, PT is very special, but not really a guest. Uh, right. But we do have a special guest, Jerry Bellinson, who is Deputy Editor, we, oh, we should get a little lower third, maybe one, one day. When you yeah. come again, we'll have a lower third for you. Yeah. Uh, Jerry from uh, the Deputy Editor editor of Popular Mechanics, which is yes. a magazine that's been published since when? When was it first published? 1902. 1902. Yeah. So chances are before you were born, or before your parents were born, uh, this magazine was going strong, publishing all sorts of cool projects with mechanics, electronics, yeah. chemistry, biology, who, who knows? Anyway, you want to? it was like the pre-make before make. Yeah, pre, we'll, pre, pre we'll actually get into a little bit of popular mechanics history. Um, let me uh, first dive into what we're going to have on the show tonight. On tonight's show, the code is POPMEC. 10% off everything in the native fruit store that's in stock. POPMEC is the code. Um, we're still taking Bitcoins. It's weird. I'm going to ask Jerry what he thinks about that. <laughs> um, and we still have our special, which is... Free shipping. $99 or more, UPS ground. No. Oh, sorry. It's <laughs> one ninety nine. And then and then for ninety nine or more, the perm pro and a half size, we pop those in. Yeah, there you go. Okay, we're gonna talk about the show and tell. Talk about some popular mechanics, some issues of yesteryear, the current issue on stands now. Wait, can you go back one? Yeah. What about it? So it's the, that was like the first issue. No, this is the first issue. We're gonna talk about that. That's cool. That's cool. I like how the logo hasn't changed that much. Like 25 innovators leading the new industrial revolution. That's why we're here. We're going to be talking about all 25 of them. We're going to answer some of your questions. We have a trivia question. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. All right. OK. So uh, first up, pay some bills. Uh, Pop Mac is a code, 10% off everything needed for a store. Don't forget. Um, so uh, Jerry, you've probably been following uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> so I wasted my. I should have been mining Bitcoin all those years. Yeah, and, right. You know. So we started taking Bitcoin. I think at peak Bitcoin, and mm -hmm. we did a tutorial about making your own miner. Mm -hmm. And there was people who made their own miner using Adafruit. Uh, the Adafruit tutorial. And they really annoyed at you. <laughs> no, no. Then they then okay. they used the coins that they mined to buy stuff on the Adafruit site mm -hmm. because they mined Bitcoins. So it actually worked out. It was kind of interesting. Um, what, what has been the, the vibe of popular mechanics about Bitcoin? Has it just been like, a, here's a cryptocurrency that we're curious about? Have you heard any, or seen any hardware? Or what's, no, what's I think pr pretty much that. I mean, we first wrote about Bitcoin, at, you know, a couple of years ago and then didn't follow it that much. And we actually had an editor who, like, you know, mined Bitcoin a little bit and it was worth, like, you know, a dollar. And yeah. he stopped, you know. <laughs> and, and, you and, get and, one cigarette. Yeah, <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, all well, the news recently has been really, really weird. You know, it's weirder and I mean, weirder every day. Weird. Yeah. Uh, been, one of the things that's really fun, just journalistically, is that all these articles trying to come up, you know, find you know the founder of Bitcoin. There's yeah. a, this beautiful story about this guy in California who's oh, the like, Newsweek article. Yeah, he has one of the you know not the guy, but one of one of the the people who helped. It's just really awesome. But it's like this great. You know, man of mystery. So that's kind of yeah. kind of like that personal story. Yeah. I think that's it, really it's neat. weird for us because you know everyone was like, oh, you should make hardware around it. So we decided to make tutorials and we used a Raspberry Pi. But um, if we had made hardware, you know, once once this Bitcoin thing is over, the hardware is so specific. So there's going to be also, like also like there's a minor ASICs, and then they immediately get like the better ones come out. Like ones are ten times faster, hundred times faster. So it's like yeah. there's a lot of ASICs out there that like by the time they actually get made, because it takes so long to make a custom chip. That there's already something better, like there's already something better, yeah. or faster, or a new technique. So, so what's going to be cool is a hundred years from now, because I, I like thinking about what are what are people going to write about a hundred years from in, now. In 1302. The, there's going to be yeah. there's going to be pictures of this cryptocurrency miners mm -hmm. that only worked for a little period of time for this thing called Bitcoin. Yeah. And they're going to look like the contraptions, the farming contraptions of you know the 1800s that were only used for a very specific thing. It'll just be this weird like heirloom. Hardware. So you think Bitcoin's going away sometime? I soonish. think cryptocurrency is here to say, but I don't. Uh, I don't think Bitcoin itself. Right. Maybe it'll be called Bitcoin, but this current thing that's yeah. being used. Do you think like in a hundred years, like the the um, twenty one hundred two copy of like Popular Mechanics? You guys will be around for another hundred years. There'll be a little. There's some be like word a, that I can. It'll <laughs> be like a retrospective of like 
look at these wacky old technologies from like a hundred years ago, like like crypto, like they had money and they put them in wallets and you had to carry your wallet and like, yeah. what if you lost your wallet? Oh, your money was gone. You couldn't just like download it from the matrix. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, you know, one weird thing about Bitcoin is the way it's like a limited amount that can be ever mined. Yeah. So it's sort of actually a very 19th century thing, like from the gold standard, you know, yeah. so which is why some like, you know, kind of libertarians are very sort of old. Like no economist thinks that we need to have beyond the gold standard because yeah. otherwise, you know, yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. so that way constrained because it's like you can't mine more than a yeah, certain amount of gold. Right, yeah. which kind of makes sense, but it's kind of good that we have inflation and we can kind of change the you know, yeah, currency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. It's really, it's... Um, yeah, for us it's fascinating because yeah. we know that um, lots of companies are taking Bitcoin. Um, we were like, I think, one of the first, uh, certainly the first hobbyist electronics company. Right. And our customers are really into it. You know, we kind of have our like hacker show vibe thing and like we like uh, doing things with math. And for us it made a lot of sense. But then, you know, bigger companies overstock and then um, Shopify. And Shopify was actually one of the uh, folks on the top 25 innovator list, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit, they started taking Bitcoin too. Okay, so you're a retailer, so I should probably know this, but I just have to ask because I don't really understand it. When a currency um, goes so nuts and it's just one wow. day it's worth X and the next day it's worth like 5X, Yeah. how, like, how does that work? excellent question. Do you want to tell them what we did? Uh, we use um, a merchant system called BitPay and they actually mm -hmm. do the conversion and they hold the value. They uh, guarantee okay. the value for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so while the person is going through the transaction, the, yeah, five minutes only. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, no, I mean okay, like no, the, they guarantee sense. for like no, well, like, it's not five minutes, like fifteen minutes. But it's saying like they, they're like within this window, we guarantee this price. Oh, so it doesn't matter. So you. if it fluctuates right, okay. up or down, it, you know, as long as it goes up half the time and down half the time, it doesn't matter because they either get like an extra two cents or a negative cents, and then they. It, but we get the exact amount. Mm, okay. And if they happen to like make money on the the arbitrage, I guess they get to keep it. Although I don't, I don't imagine that they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's our Bitcoin story. So anyways, we're still doing it. We did it at peak Bitcoin. It's been a nice chunk of revenue that we weren't expecting. And mm -hmm. a lot of people who wanted to kind of get out of the Bitcoin world were able to get some electronics. So it worked out okay. nicely. Yeah, it's All it's right. Bitcoin store. So okay. next up we had the show and tell. Uh, Lady Ada, what was on the show and tell this week? Okay, I'm going to go through the show and tell list, which I go down, because there's so many people. We had like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We had nine people. On yeah. And, and how many were Davids? Yeah. Two. Two. Two out of nine were David. We had a lot of I, David market share. I, yes, <laughs> reaching all the Davids. Tony DeCola, uh, who's a resident uh, hacker, I guess, came in again. This time, instead of uh, classic Bluetooth, he's now um, messing around with Bluetooth low energy using the Bluefruit LE breakup board that we sent him because he wanted to do some cool Bluetooth stuff on Android. And he determined that uh, Bluetooth energy on Android 4.3 kind of sucks. But on 4.4, <laughs> it's not so bad. And he got a, a simple demo app working where you can turn on and off LEDs through an Arduino or um, with the Bluefruit LE. So there you go. You get cr he's, he's basically ready to go to Kickstarter with his like, LED <laughs> blinker, whatever, app, wearable. OK, our Arcturus came by, and he had a cool uh, hood that he made. It's a cosplay hood, and it looked like it was made out of like vinyl or leather. And it had an EL strip in the hood, so it like kind of made his face glow blue. And then he's also experiment with, with uh, uh, chainmail titanium um, collars that have uh, fiber optic LEDs embedded through them. They're sewn through the chainmail. Uh, it looked like, um, and then he's using uh, bright LEDs to light up that side emitting fiber optics. So he's kind of experimenting with like costuming, cosplay. Uh, and how to use LEDs in it to get a good diffuse glow, because you want that nice diffuse look. Um, but EL is not that bright, and it's noisy, and you know, fiber optics kind of tough to work with, so well, maybe I'll come back and, and show even more projects with uh, LED cosplay. Justin Shaw uh, came by, and he had a non-NeoPixel-related project for the first time ever. Uh, no, that's not true. He, he comes by with all sorts of projects, but this time it's a gear clock, which is a laser cut gear that used one stepper motor and then the clock face itself is a, is a planetary gear with like the minute and the um, seconds inside of it and so the outside rotates to, to show you the seconds, minutes and hours or maybe just minutes and hours, I don't know if it showed seconds. Um, it's a cool little clock because it's like one little stepper motor in the middle and it rotates. It's a nice design and it has a very precise RTC. Uh, Matthew and friend showed up. Uh, friend's name was, what was her name? Amelia. Amelia. Yep. Amelia or Amelia. 
Um, for her birthday, made a NeoPixel tiara based on the project that Becky Stern did for a couple weeks ago for uh, Wearable Wednesday. And it's a lovely NeoPixel tiara with many beautiful colors. And uh, Amelia is going to wear it to her birthday party, and she will be the most uh, popular kid at her party. It's her birthday, so I think she's in the running anyway. She's in the running anyways. <laughs> but now, she, but she'll have the best birthday party because it's everyone's going to be like, yeah. oh and, my god, and with an scene on the show until sticker, and with a sticker on it too. Um, David Ockley came by. That's the first David, and he made an Arduino MIDI synth that plays from a PC speaker, and it sounds super tacky on purpose, and it's controlled from an Omnicord MIDI. Uh, like controller thing with like knobs and pulses. It's basically like a like a like an old style MIDI controller, but from like the '80s, uh, which is when MIDI was invented. And uh, he got it playing all sorts of MIDI tracks, and it and he got like this cool like chord playing technology because you know you can't really do polyphony on an Arduino easily. So what he did is he actually plays uh, or he arpeggiates through chords by playing them very very fast. And he also does pitch band. So he's like really into MIDI now, uh, and like yeah. Go, go pitch bend and sysx and all that good stuff. Um, we also had another David who came by with a different project. This one is a DIY boom box. He made a big boom box like this big with, um, looks like it was made out of plywood and some large like speaker cones that he found. And uh, it can play from the radio. It can play from Bluetooth or line in. And on the front is a grid of like eight by 10 LEDs that uh, turns into a graphical equalizer or can play Pong. So there you yeah. go. He also has like an LCD and some knobs. It's a really actually quite nice boombox, very uh, high end. It has like, the Bluetooth and radio, like it's kind of intense. Kristen came by. She's in school and she's learning about uh, signals and systems. And so she's like, okay, I know about making uh, low pass filters. So I'm gonna use that knowledge to create glasses that light up when the bass gets turned on in the club with the boom box and this MIDI synth, which is apparently where we all are at. Um, and she uh, made an RC filter using a certain capacitor and then used that to control the amplitude of light. Looks really good. And she'll come back later uh, with more batteries and demo it again. Yeah. Roberto, who's always shown up with all sorts of cool projects, uh, put on his EL uh, sound reactive glasses and also had a boom box radio. So everyone's got boom box radios. Uh, he used her 20 watt amplifier and uh, he just had a line in and was playing from his uh, phone. And also, he built a, a Beagle Bug Black robot that has um, it's like an airplay radio that has a, uh, two speakers for eyes, and the mouth is like a screen, and like yeah. he's playing music. And he entered into a contest, and hopefully, he won. Okay. Every week, Show and Tell is on 7 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on yeah. Wednesdays. You can show your projects and more. Very exciting. Lady Ada, how do people get on the show and tell? Um, it's super easy. Go to our Google Plus page at plus.google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit and look for the post where we say comment here to get added to the show and tell circle. If you comment there and say you have a project, we'll add your profile from Google Plus to our list That's of right. cool people. You will get to join this boombox and LED glasses party that we have every single week. Yeah. And t tonight in the audience, I know we have lots of folks who follow uh, Popular Mechanics. If you're working on anything, any type of project. Um, it's not to be electronics. Yeah. Uh, come on the show. Show your stuff. I would love to see some like there, bike welding projects or some like I took apart like some. Yeah. We have, a, we, have a, we have a pretty big spectrum of projects and mm -hmm. uh, it's expanding. So uh, speaking of, uh, oh, all participants on the show and tell get a seen on show and tell sticker. <laughs> <laughs> So, speaking of, I did a screenshot of all these popular mechanics covers. Um, one of the things I, I like to do at Make as we got more issues is look at them mm -hmm. and say, this is going to be something lo that someone looks at a long time ago. So, uh, Jerry uh, is the deputy editor mm -hmm. of Popular Mechanics, uh, once again for the folks just joining in. Uh, Jerry, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. Hello. Um, cool to be here. Like every cover and be like, so what's your favorite project? Yes, this no. Um, but you know, you probably get this question asked a lot. So you, you're probably mm -hmm. uh, um, almost a walking Wikipedia entry on this. Is oh, what, well, what hmm. exactly is Popular Mechanics magazine? Oh, what a good question. So we we uh, were founded in 1902, and it's a science and technology magazine. So we. Um, are really interested in how things work and we think like our readers um, and our kind of community go all the way from people who want to know how we can make a cool electronics thing and the classic thing was the you know 
you know, the hovercraft or making something out, you know, some go kind cart, of cool yeah. go-karts and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, like yeah, all that kind of thing. So how to make something is how to fix something, like, oh, you know, how do I fix my, you know, car or, or, or do something with electronics, all the way to, like, how should the space shuttle work? Is that working the way it should? And, you know, if I can understand, like, the Hubble Space Telescope and I can understand how my heater works, I can understand how, like, an Adafruit project works, and I'm all, that's, that's what I'm, I'm after as a reader. So, um... It's really an interesting thing. The mission of the magazine has not changed that much over that whole period of time. Like we also, we, you know, have been there for like the development of airplanes, the first radio. There were a lot of radio projects. And also like just, you know, wow, radio is coming out. This is how it works. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be transformative yeah. kind of stuff. And that was really Here's a Here's really the neat. first cover. You can look at it on screen there. This is the uh, volume one, number one, January 11th, 1902. An illustrated weekly review of the mechanical press of the world, popular mechanics. Chicago. In Chicago, the, yeah, yeah, for like the first for the 40 printing. years. Yeah. Um, I have so. a question. So, are most of the uh, readers, do you think that they are like amateur um, scientists mm -hmm. and builders, or are they actually professionals who are like, hey, when I get back from my job at like NASA Ames, I want to read more about this stuff, you know? You know, I think we have. Um, this awesome, really cool, wide mix. So I know that there are definitely people who are absolute amateurs who do totally different. I mean, that's the majority of the magazine, probably. Mm -hmm. But when we do like have people in from NASA or whatever, very often we find that those are also part of the, the, the group. So it's this really cool, kind of diverse group. They were from all over the country. They're different ages. They do different things professionally. Um, and some of them are more, you know, like a lot of them. You know, my their kind of project is that they build tree houses. You know, and yeah. somebody else is a completely different kind of thing. And then other people who are just really interested in kind of how the the world works. You know, like we do um, energy coverage. And um, what's really cool, like looking back, we had like in 1912, like this awesome story about why the Titanic sank. You know, and then we had That's like, cool. is there life yeah. on Mars? In like 1928, which was this really smart article. I mean, it was a little scary to like, you know, what's going to be in there when I start. Yeah. reading about the canals and stuff. But yeah. It's like this really great article. It's like, you know, Mars has like 2% of our atmosphere. This is the temperatures. You know, yeah. this is, you know, the kind of, you know, history it has. You know, if we were to look for life, we would look here so it's or there. Like, it's, like, it's, a, it's, it's not only projects, but new, the current news and discoveries, but with more depth. Like you're, you're diving deeper into the science, the math, the mechanics behind it. Because like a lot of times when you read a, a, a normal magazine like, Time or Newsweek or whatever, they'll kind of gloss over it. They'll mm -hmm. say like, yeah. "Oh, the ISS is undergoing repairs," but they won't say or, what. Or a gadget why. magazine, which is just about the glossy photos. You never see these um, exploded views. Yeah, we stuff. we kind of think like any story can be covered from a technology point of view. Yeah, that's yeah. You can kind of write about anything. So the um, Jan Wenner is like the really incredibly famous uh, founder of Rolling Stone magazine. And he always said that, you know, there was a Rolling Stone angle on every story in the world. And yeah. we thought, kind of think, and it's been cool, I've worked in the magazine for a number of years, and, you know, everything from, you know, from, from climate change to Katrina to, you know, the emergence of 3D printing and things like that, yeah. we've been able to cover in some way or other. It's been, it's cool. It's, yeah. it's been very so cool. So I pulled up one of these and I, I, I did this randomly because mm -hmm. I figured I'm just going to kind of spin the dial and see what happens because I kind of like closed my eyes and clicked. And you got a train. Yeah, this one was kind of neat. So um, this was September of uh, just a couple of years later and already the magazine has at the top largest circulation of any mechanical publication in the world. That's cool. And then, I don't know if you can see this on the screen, people are watching in HG Ken, it says, written so you can understand it. I love Right underneath that. popular mechanics. And then they're covering a contemporary thing, this monster new locomotive. Uh, it can draw 3,500 tons, tank capacity of 7,500 gallons, coal capacity 16 uh, tons, see page 932. 932. <laughs> um, <laughs> they counted from the first, right? The whole year yeah. was yeah, one yeah, yeah, with yeah. one volume. That's issue nine, so it's yeah. September. Yeah. So because they would bind them and then you'd buy the full yeah, year. And you could get a box, right, you didn't yeah. get the whole bound so I thought thing. That, that was, does that sound funny? Yeah. It's like 930. So I thought, but isn't one. I thought that was pretty so cool. so you can understand Cool. We had that, that tag on. So you can understand that. That is nice. Maybe you can bring that back. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you can remember like what era this is, so everything's written in this really formal, yeah, kind of 19th century way. Yeah. And then a lot of the readers here are actually tradespeople. Yeah, people maybe are really, really smart mechanically, but don't yeah. 
they're not part of the same, same circle that was writing those technical journals. Yeah. There's for, no internet at the time. Yeah. So, and this, so was, this, this was, was before like everyone went to college. This was people had trades. Yeah. So they're like, well, I, I, you know, they could run a locomotive, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they went. That's all they. The, that's all they, they did. They may not even gone to high school. Yeah, that's all. And, but they did it the best. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all. Well, they, they had they really broad that. mechanical skills. Actually, our yeah. editor in chief at that, that time, his grandfather, was working on the Panama Canal. Um, it was a really oh, cool wow. story. He was on his way back from being a little bit later, maybe released from uh, the Navy, and he just stopped in Panama and stayed. But he was this great, not trained. You know, but just great engineer who just figured out all this great mechanical stuff down there. And he, he was basically yeah. a machinist who was just really, really mechanically talented and very innovative. But yeah, I mean, he didn't have an engineering degree. He was just knew how to do stuff. So uh, that brings us to the present. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we're going to maybe open up for questions or anything, but I just have to s stop now and say there's a bunch of people in the multiple chat rooms that said, I got a box of popular mechanics. That's why I became an engineer. This is why That's I became. Cool. This is why I decided to be curious. So, it, do you hear this a lot? Do people say, "Oh," when they hear that you're? Most times that, you know, maybe a little older than you, but most of the engineers I meet who are like in their 40s or more, most of them say that. Yeah. that it's very, very typical. All the NASA guys have said that to us. It's really yeah. cool. They're like, this is why I got started. I remember like when it was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. In a couple of years, it's going to be like, kids are going to say, like, I remember growing up watching the, the Pop Mech YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. Or you know? yeah. So, yeah. or, you know, basically we're, you know, um, Adafruit. Here we are. All right. The makers. 25 liters of the new industrial revolution. This is... Uh, on stands now in the chat, I put a um, a link. Uh, I subscribe via the iPad, which is a lot of fun because you get videos and mm -hmm. you get other things. And uh, I just took some screenshots. This was my my experience when I got um, the magazine on my iPad. Um, it had some people I knew in it. Um, I, I knew this was coming. It wasn't that much of a surprise. And uh, the feature was movers and makers. A fresh breed of innovators and entrepreneurs are using cutting edge tech, a die hard DIY ethic, and unconventional funding methods to fire the engines of the innovation economy. Meet the 25 leaders of the new industrial revolution. So, um, you you were part of uh, coming up with this and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, worked with everybody. Um, yeah. why, why now and why um, choose 25 yeah. of these people? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the maker movement's been uh, kind of bubbling up for a bit. Um, sure. Why, why put, you know, makers, and we'll get to the, uh, the the ones that you selected, yes. um, why, why is it time to celebrate them now? Well, I think it's been time, you know, for a while. One thing that is a little new that we've really been interested in, and this really works for parts mechanics, so, you know, there's always been the dream of you build something in your garage and then maybe you'll start a company and you'll be able to, you know, people will, you know, beat the a road to your door. And these days, it's really way easier than it has been for a really, really long time for people to take things that they were doing purely for fun as a hobby and kind of turn it into a business and, and expand and make it into you know, a big part of their lives. And even if they're not doing that, the tools for, that people can use are so much more powerful and easy now. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it, you know, what, what has come about, you know, our interest in, in this in particular right now, has this, this ability for people to do, kind of found a company. And it could be really small. There's a lot of small batch manufacturing. You can sell stuff really easily. You don't need as much outside expertise to figure out how to do things. You don't need to source everything from, from a distance. So it seems like even the maker movement, for one thing, is growing even bigger and has become yeah. like more in the public consciousness. But the number of people who are actually now doing it as a kind of full-time thing has gotten, yeah. that, that seems to be something that you know, we're really noticing in the last couple of years. Yeah, we'll talk about that soon. Um, when Lemore started Adafruit, um, uh, I was uh, working at Make. I'd started uh, Hackaday. I was doing how-tos on Engadget before that. Um, I wrote for PopSci. And there was never any opportunity to get crowdfunding, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the different people in there. But, boy, has it changed. The, the Internet wasn't what it was now. That you never could you come up with an idea and possibly manufacture and get money. Mm -hmm. as fast as possible. I don't, I don't know if it's ever going to be easy because there's so much responsibility yeah. on your shoulders, but it's just more available, which uh, really changes things. So this, I, I agree, this is, uh, there was no Kickstarter when Make started. Right. That, just, that was not too long ago. Yeah. There was no Indiegogo. And also people are prototyping stuff at a tech shop and may not have all yeah. the skills, but they say they meet somebody there that they yeah. want to meet. They 
have a, a way, even if it's not, they're not doing it totally professionally, they go into Instructables, share their projects, get feedback, and get inspired. Yeah. Um, the, what you know, you said about kind of a lot of the inspiration for starting Adafruit is, well, I'd like to make that too, but how do I ever f find the parts? I don't want to order like 500 of something. So there are just a lot of ways that it's easier now to even get started, I think. And yeah. so that, um, you know, that, that's a really cool thing. That's okay, really cool thing. so here they are, um, you know. The oh, and one, and, right, and as we go through the thing, the other thing that we want to do, you know, because we've done a lot of stories on, you know, new industrial tools, desktop manufacturing, or helping you realize your dreams, and here's how to get started with 3D printing. Something that we didn't think anyone else had ever done um, that we want to do is by picking a whole range of people that we thought were really important, mm -hmm. start to define what we're even talking about, because it's yeah. a maker movement, but there's also sort of this like new innovation economy that people are talking about. And what does that mean? What are the parameters of it? And we thought it'd be really cool to pull together a number of people, yeah. and then you can say, well, th this is kind of what we're talking about. I like that this particular um, approach hit the, the business side too. You have Shopify in there, you yeah. have Kickstarter in there, mm -hmm. and it's not just about um, the the making of a thing. Here's here's the here's this great circuit board. It's actually how did you sell it? Yeah. How did you get mm -hmm. it out there? How did you print it? How did you uh, how did you get it online? So I really like how did you fund it? I really like that it covered all that because it's you can't just do an electronics business now like we we do one. You can't just do that. You actually have to have um, all sorts of businesses that are that are part of doing electronics. Yeah. You know you kind of have to have a shipping business mm -hmm. inside your thing. You have to have like a publishing. Right. business. So um, uh, one of the things too is all these people weren't together. Um, I have a behind the scenes uh, photo. You actually shipped the set around. Uh, this is yes. Aya and Lamore and they weren't photographed at the same time. They were just happened to be on the set at the, on the same day. I, is that how you were able to get 25 people together to make them look like they were in the same room? Yeah, this is I'm sort the of... the secret of publishing. <laughs> it, it it, did, I, did I just reveal too much? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's kind of cool. It's actually it's the Vanity Fair <laughs> secret. So we actually had two shoots. One was in San Francisco and one was in New York. And we didn't want, uh, you know, all these people are really busy. So we didn't want people to sit around for like six hours while we tried to assemble a big photo. So we shot them in ones and twos and threes and then, and then composed it. Yeah. Um, but we did build the set, you know, in New York and actually have people in the right positions, you know, more or less. Shot, so it's not like somebody from all the way on the left was then moved all the way to the right. Yeah, you know, we, we didn't quite yeah, do it that like way. Layer yeah. It was Both, layered, yeah. And then we built basically took tons of photos and and built basically the same set in San Francisco, and yeah. did you know full day shoot like there and and kind of glued it all together. Good yeah. to me. Yeah. So yeah, Look, it was cool. And our looks great. photographer was. Yeah, you guys um, are pro. He was yeah. awesome. It's really an interesting technical thing. The way he, it was just really cool. Like he had this iPad here, so that somebody was transmitting to him. Somebody else was doing the Photoshop, yeah. so he could see. Okay, you know, he was on the set, but somebody else was like. And somebody quickly like, okay, yeah. would that fit? Real would that time. fit? Would that fit? Yeah, yeah, kind of composing it and. and so the first person was probably yeah. the easiest person. Yeah. Then you have to like, you have to like jigsaw them in. Okay. This is yeah. a human Tetris. So um, we're gonna run through all 25. I think this is like the extended video ready? version. Yeah. So we're gonna do this, and okay. we'll, uh, we have a couple. We have three videos all together. So for the uh, videos, um, we'll go through these pretty quickly. So number one, Perry Chen and Yancy Strickler, Kickstarter. So this is what we were talking about before. So uh, yeah. uh, why Kickstarter? It's it's hard to imagine like a more central player than Kickstarter. You know, a lot of the people that we selected, they make their own thing, but a lot of them, or almost all of them, actually enable other people to do stuff. And so that is all about, is what Kickstarter is about. I mean, they've had something like a billion dollars given away. And, and yeah. you hear about the big ones, you know, you know, um, Axel Rift, but tons of little projects. Like I know somebody who, Joel Johnson actually, he probably know, um, this, you know, kind of the dean, I think, of the tech bloggers. You know, he funded the very first successful Kickstarter when it came out, and it was like a $20 Kickstarter or something yeah, that he put yeah, in, yeah. and somebody was making a poster or something. Yeah. And you do that from that all the way up to making movies, to making the Oculus Rift, and to doing yeah. art installations in Kansas. It's just, yeah. you okay. know. Good one. In fact, yeah. um, we have uh, a video. Now, this is the first time that I actually saw Yancy speak because they always promote the uh, makers and the Kickstarters, which I really like. So this was kind of a treat. So let's play the video.
Starting in about 2005, Perry and I went around and tried to explain Kickstarter to people. Keep in mind it was just a concept and we got a lot of blank faces. Um, we really struggled to get people excited about it with the exception of our friends and artists who immediately saw this need. But when we talked to business people, uh, they didn't see it at all. There was just this notion of, well, there's plenty of art and creative stuff in the world. Why is there an issue with funding? But we have this weird relationship with creativity and with cultural products, whether it's an iPhone case or an album, where it, sim it simply seems to magically exist, but we don't think about how it got there. And that's largely ignored because people are focused on how to sell and exploit the finished works, because that's how you make money. But this notion of where things come from in the first place, how you support inspiration, how you give it a path to existence, is something that we didn't see other people focusing on, but something that consumed us. So here we are, coming up on the five-year anniversary of Kickstarter, a billion dollars to creative projects from over five million people, and over 60,000 things that have been successfully funded are now existing or coming into existence in the world. But the history of this system is actually much, much longer. Uh, if you go all the way back to the 15th and 16th century, you really see the first Kickstarter projects. Arguably the first one was the first translation of the Iliad into English by Alexander Pope. Uh, it was in Greek, he had this idea that he wanted to translate to English some 16,000 lines of poetry, and so he reached out to 700 people, backers, uh, who gave him money so he could have the time to print this. And the very first edition of the Iliad featured these lists of names in the front. So on the, the geologic scale of creativity and cultural production, community-based funding, people working together to create things has been the dominant form. It's only in the past 125 years that large corporations decide to commoditize and subsidize art for reasons of making money. And so that really made this other model dormant and Kickstarter's really brought it back to the fore. And what's exciting about this is that this is not gonna go away. This is a system that's too effective that allows too many people to have a say and answers, I think, a lot of core human desires where we all get to have a say in the culture that exists around us. I think in five years the world will look a lot more like Kickstarter, that you're not going through a gatekeeper, that, that innovation is not being defined by a boardroom. It's defined by people who actually know and understand these things. And it's not just in the sense of giving you money and I get the product when it's done. It's also helping with the design. Someone puts up a design for some Arduino board and some commenters like, hey, if you move this circuit over to the right, you'll find it works a whole lot better. And we see those things happen all the time. So for things like things in the world of hardware and technology, we ask those creators to show their work. Don't just show the, the finished beautiful rendering, show the actual thing with the wire sticking out of it. It's more honest. You're treating people as peers. If you look at something like the iPhone, the most exciting innovation that we've seen in forever, you know, Steve Jobs held that up one day and we saw it for the first time. We, we didn't see how that came to be the 10 or 15 years they spent thinking about it. If you look at a Kickstarter project, you see every phase of it. Something like the Pebble, they were posting videos from the factory floor in Shenzhen and showed what it was like to make a watch face and how these whole things worked. And you learned what the global supply chain was. And to me, that transparency that Kickstarter brings about is one of the things that we're most proud of because people having a greater understanding of where things come from uh, educates the public and I think creates a better appreciation for the things that we use. When I go into a bookstore and see a book there that was funded on Kickstarter, or I go to a, see a movie that was funded on Kickstarter, or see trailers, or go into the Apple store and see a whole shelf of things that were made on Kickstarter, uh, that's incredible because it's not really about us, it's about us being a tool and a conduit for these things to happen. It's purely democratic uh, and it's simply almost a measurement of love. Uh, that's out there for inspiration, for creativity, and these types of things. Oh, no, we're great. Okay. okay. Okay, and we're, we're back. back. Next up, number two, Carl Bass, Autodesk. One of the things, too, about these is they're all kind of connected. Yeah. So Autodesk has something to do with, like, Instructables, and we'll get to them. So right. mm -hmm. um, Carl has a massive workshop. I don't know if you've ever heard about his... Oh, uh, yeah, I was out there. Oh, you saw it's, it? Well, yeah, the one on the pier in San Francisco, or yeah. his own personal one. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. he has his own personal one, but I think it was... Um, so, so in San Francisco, they now have this huge workshop, which I think is largely because they can do it and they wanted it. So, you know, in addition to being the CEO of Autodesk, and you know, one of the cool, so why is he there? One reason, obviously, is CAD software. I mean, everything's made with CAD, but you know, they've really made this push into making things easy for like ordinary people with a whole one, two, three series. Yeah. So you can kind of get started on using 3D modeling, even like one, two, three creature, which is really fun. You just make these awesome yeah. creatures. So. So that, that is really cool. But Carl himself is also a really neat 
sort of promoter of the maker movement. I mean, he's a boat builder and a carpenter, and he welds stuff. Yeah. So he really gets it, and he's trying to promote this stuff. So we, we he's cool. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was neat. Well, so I wrote an article uh, when Instru Instructables got acquired, and I, and I predicted that it, the site was only going to get better. Mm -hmm. Luckily, that happened. <laughs> the site only got better because everyone was like, oh, what are they going to do? They're going to turn it into an, you know, an app or like whatever. No, they, they actually wanted the team there yeah. for the community. It was smart to know if you want to have all these apps to teach people, you need a community around each one. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to Instructables in a bit. Okay, next up, number three, Lisa and Scott Crump. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, they pioneered 3D printing, so they started um, Stratasys. Yeah, and you know there are lots of different kinds of 3D printing technologies, but, you know, um, and you'll know the words a little more. Fused deposit modeling, I guess, Dep is what deposition. it's called. Deposition yeah. modeling. So Which is not, not the deposition that you get in court. This is, yeah. is, is, is <laughs> depositing. It and, and Scott uses so, because he wanted to make a frog for his kid. Yeah, using yeah. like a glue gun. And um, so it's just like most makers have probably not heard of these people. They've heard of Stratasys. But in terms of somebody who's really you know enabled the maker movement, I mean, this is you know yeah. this is a big deal. Okay, and I uh, just wanted to show this is you know this is how they far make, they've they come. They make big, yeah, 3D and printers. this is the type of stuff you can print on them. Phenomenal. Yeah, this is like hardcore, uh, yeah. you know, three D printing with full color, you know, ink, yeah. ink uh, that is um, squirted in as it, it's doing this this modeling, but yeah. And tons I'm of materials too. I thought too. FDM was l older than eighty eight. Really, eighty eight is only this. I thought it was before then. Um, yeah. And. Uh, you know, look how look how far it's come from, like glue gun and, and you know yeah. plastic. So that's I mean, really you cool. could you could mill this out with like a five axis mill, but it's just a yeah. pain. It's, it's so much faster, and you just let it run. And Stratasys bought MakerBot, and we'll yeah. get to MakerBot shortly. Yeah, <laughs> all mm -hmm. connected. Um, GoPro. This is one of my favorite companies. Mm -hmm. um, boy, did they change the world. They actually don't make hardware. They make yeah. videos. Right. They just happen to sell a camera once in a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they make everybody into a movie maker, which is totally awesome. So, yeah. again, like, it's a cool product, but it's all, and he's a maker. I mean, the guy was a surfer. Yeah. But also, they enable people to become artists, right? Yeah. And then they also spawn this whole thing of people making their own mounts and people putting, putting them on drones. Yeah. So, it's like now become a platform, basically, that people use for all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Uh, we had Mark Barrows, who was competing against them, um, he had a company called Contour Camera. Yeah, I saw and that. We had him on our hardware uh -huh. hangout. And he's just like, oh, yeah, they totally kicked our ass. And mm -hmm. he said, why? And it was interesting when you see these articles. Like, we're really big fans of GoPro because of the, they're, they're a content company that makes hardware. Yeah. You know, we're a mm -hmm. tutorial company that makes hardware. Mm -hmm. um, they remind me of Red Bull, which is a event company that makes a... Caffeine. A, ca <laughs> a very high-powered, high-octane beverage. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's kind of the future where um, you have a company that you, you, you think you know what their core business is, but mm -hmm. it's actually something a little different. So excellent choice. And that, that, I was thrilled to see that. Next up, Beth Comstock, number five. Um, Mark, Chief Ar Marketing Officer of GE. She visited here, us here at Adafruit mm -hmm. not too long ago. So why, so it's, she's an interesting choice, right? But, okay, GE... Marketing. It's a huge company, right? The biggest, I think. So, <laughs> and but she's interested in you guys and in, in Quirky. She works with Tech Shop, so she's really working to try to promote innovation in the maker movement. Yeah. And she's also trying to bring that same kind of culture back into GE. So yeah. that is really interesting. She's trying to turn, you know, make the the. I mean, that's an innovation company, but yeah. making the kind of like you know, um, very individual kind of, you know, kind of nimble agile kind of innovation come back into one of the oldest tech companies. Yeah. So that, I, we thought that was really cool. I've never seen a larger company um, move so fast to say the maker movement is something we want to be part of. Like they moved, uh, Lamor and I went out, to, they invited us to GE as part of Make, mm -hmm. and uh, we went there. That was like two, three years ago. That was like five years ago Four now, years ago. and it was upstate New York, and it was uh, phenomenal. Oh, that's and, right, you were still at Make at the time. So and they, and they mm -hmm. wanted, they, they, want, they wanted their the internal culture to see this maker movement and, and like you said, fast, nimble. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. Next up, number six. This is um, hey. a girl who does it. This some girl engineer or something like that. Wow. Oh, okay. Hey. So this is, this is you. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're in there. All right. So Lamore's in there. So Lamore's in there. So you know what? One of the cool things is we went around and asked people, and and a lot of people's name came up repeatedly. No one more than than you. Like everyone said, <laughs> oh, you know, Chris Anderson, who's actually on the cover of the magazine, was like, everything I learned about electronics, I learned from Adafruit. So, you know, I expect it's very interesting for, for, you know, for us popular mechanics. There's so many, you can call them plug and play things, like 
circular saw blades. Yeah. Everyone knows how. But electronics is a, like way more mysterious thing to a lot of people. And so what you guys have done has really been to enable so many more people to get started, learn about electronics, you know, get simple kits, and Surf all the outreach. Me. I, don't, I don't think they're simple at all. Surf cells like tick your arm off. At least yeah. electronics, the worst that can happen is you burn your finger. Yeah, and you know, usually it's low voltage things that you're working with and stuff. Nine but, volts. Okay. You know. Okay. Not what you do. Okay. Safe, we know you show a video. You're, you're, you're here every week. Yeah. All right. Next oh, awesome video. Check out the video. Yeah. The videos are online too. Or, Paul Graham, um, yeah. funding some of the uh, hardware startups coming out now, and also tons of startups. Yeah. Well, also that the whole kind of you know incubator thing. He's just such a leader in that. And so, like, you know, we list a few of the companies they work with, Airbnb and Reddit and so on. But that whole model of let's get a bunch of really smart people together, put them through boot camp, help them launch their company, you know, there's no one more important than him in, in getting that going. Okay. Next up, Neil Gerstenfeld. You know Neil. Um, Fab Labs. I mean... Uh, he has a little bit like a Steve Jobs look in yeah. this. He doesn't normally look F like... Fab Labs, which, which started a lot of the trends for hacker spaces and tech shops. Yeah, and then imagine also all the engineers who've gone through MIT who just were inspired by him as well. Yep. Yeah, here in the Media Lab, you, you, almost everyone tried to take the how to make almost anything or how to make and how to make something that makes almost anything class, which is like you know, basically like tech shop yeah. training, right? It's like we learn how to use every kind of weird tool and electronics mm -hmm. and microcontrollers and like. Like 14 weeks. Next up, uh, Bree Pettis. I'll do my Bree story. So okay. Bree was a school teacher in Seattle, mm -hmm. and um, he was doing videos in his uh, classroom. And I saw them, and I'm like, you have to come work at Make Magazine, mm -hmm. and we should like do videos and stuff. So he quit being a teacher. Um, he started doing stuff at Make, and then eventually, him and I moved to New York around the same time. Lamore moved to New York, and we were in the Etsy space, and it was just a couple of us. We had mm -hmm. like the, their back room. And uh, I worked with Bree at, at Make. So oh, th yeah, awesome. So that that's my like you know my origin story with how uh, I met Bree. And now um, he's in that list. Um, the CEO of MakerBot recently yeah. acquired Merge with Stratasys. Right. So that's a big one. Yeah. And here's their um, newest model that uh, we may have in our store soon. <laughs> that's the model of the model. Yeah. So uh, yeah. 3D printers, lots of 3D printing stuff in this year. It, obviously, yeah, there's yep. got to be a MakerBot, of course, is like synonymous with that. All right, next up, uh, Tony from Nest, uh, w w was he selected before the acquisition or, at, or, or, or was it, no, this must, you guys must have it was, before. It, it was, was just, planned. it was before, actually, yeah. yeah. Good call. So, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, sometimes when we write about stuff, it also represents a whole trend. So the Internet of Things is something that people talk about a lot. This is one of the areas where people like interact with it in yeah. a very direct way and can really understand what it's about. So that was one of the, the cool things. Then, of course, also you just get to write about, I mean, here's a guy who was had so much to do with the iPod and the iPhone, and now he's like doing thermostats. It's just, yeah. like sometimes the people are just so Yeah, so I like compelling. that they picked kind of one of the worst things ever mm -hmm. in a home and said, let's make this better. Because that what a horrible right. thing that's not changed in, in Decades. Well, that's what he always talks about. Yeah. It's like, you know, a huge percentage of all the energy in the country is controlled by thermostats, and it's the only thing in your house, practically, that had not been updated yeah. for like 50 years. All right, number 11, we'll get through these. Avi from 3D Systems, another 3D printing company, um, best known for the Cube. Yeah, another great consumer 3D printer, also another great evangelist for 3D printing, in, you know, a lot of the same way that Brie is. Yep. And that's partly, again, and also, you know, if you have those two companies, you have a a lot of 3D printing industries, so mm -hmm. we uh, thought it was really yeah, right to include both those every guys. Every other company got purchased by one or the other of them, you know, yeah. Z Corp and mm -hmm. MakerBot and oh, All probably right. yeah. others. They're more like really little companies, but, you know, and they too, 3D systems, same kind of thing. They go all the way from huge, you know, industrial machines down to caring about consumers. Yeah, and these are know. actually even available in like um, uh, Staples, right? This is the, or is it? This one is in Staples? Or? I believe so. They're, everybody's trying to get 3D printers in retail because if you could see them, you really want yeah, one. Yeah, I think that they're starting into retail, too. Okay. Well, they're doing the thing, um, just that, on that retail thing, that I have always thought would be the first way that people interact with 3D printing, which is you can go to a store and they'll print out your thing for you, the way people used yeah. to get their photos printed at Costco and stuff yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah. So. All right. Christy and Eric from Instructables. The first place, uh, one of the first places you put your tutorials online. That's right. Lady Ada. They were contests, and I would win them. So. Um, <laughs> no, they were like, hey, we need content for our website. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm, I guess yeah. I can put up some projects uh, or One of the best places in the world to just type anything in and see 
how to make just about anything. Yeah. Just to bring that theme back. Yeah, and just the number of, I mean, you know, so much of the Make a Movie is about communication. So here's another place where it's like all about makers showing their stuff and, and communicating yeah. with each other. We actually have a, um, I should plug this, we have a contest starting with them in a few days. Oh, great. Right. Right. Okay. It's called Hacker Gadgets and, or Gadget Hacking or whatever, which is exactly what it sounds like. I mean, that could be you know, Raspberry Pi <laughs> cases or who knows what it'll be. But, um, and I think that starts next Monday or so. Okay. If you send me an email, I'll put it up on okay. Datafruit site too. What's the prize? Um, there are a few prizes, okay. actually. One of them, though, we are going to we are going to write about the winner. So, that, I mean, for us, that'll be kind of yeah. a fun thing. It'll be in the magazine. Okay. I hope it's like a lifetime subscription to Pop Mag. Since we're running tight on Hush. time, I'm not going to show the full instruct Instructables video. I'm just going to okay. say that there is one, and you should watch it because it has an excellent interview with them. It's and about Christy has short hair. Yeah, she looks right. She's very corporate looking. Now. Yeah, she's very like yeah. She's she's corporate goth. Though. You, she wears like a leather mini shirt. She she has this great costume with these um, the elf ears and stuff yeah. that she made. Really cool stuff. So watch the video on the iPad app or on the website. Next up, this is Tobias from Shopify. I was talking about them earlier. This is like enabling commerce yeah. to sell all this stuff. Yeah, really quickly. I mean, his story was he was trying to sell snowboards, and it's like, oh my god, I'm spending all the time trying to build the website. Oh, I know. I'll just build what. <laughs> Instead of the website to build the website. Yeah, forget about the snowboards. This is like what the market actually needs. It's a yeah. way for people who aren't coders to be able to sell their stuff. And they have like thousands and thousands of stores now, right? Oh, it's huge. Tons, yeah. tons of Shopify stores. And they take Bitcoin now. They take Bitcoin now, and everything just kind of works on mobile devices, which is really good. So, next up, this is Palmer. Um, once again, did you guys... If only he'd get <laughs> off the ground and get some financing, he'd be all <laughs> yeah. set. Yeah, this know. is another one, I think, mid-publication. Um, acquisition. No, the, well, no, the Facebook thing was really was like, like last week, five days ago, yeah, say, or eight yeah, days ago. Yeah. So now that, that mid circulation, came, sorry, yeah, no, yeah, mid circulation, yeah. So Oculus that, Rift. yeah, um, yeah, it looks ridiculous. Ridiculous. No, no pun, no pun, no pun, no pun intended. Did not see that one coming <laughs> with yeah. Facebook buying them. I could, if, I, I would have guessed Google. Yeah, I, would guess, kind of I actually would have guessed Microsoft for Xbox. That yeah, was because I thought yeah. it would be like a, a, a half more. connect half. Um, Maybe they got them because they didn't want Microsoft to get them. Yeah. Well, Maybe one thing like, that cool. Oculus is saying that they like about Facebook is they don't actually have a console. They're not in the hardware business, and so they think they're more likely to be able to kind of leave it as an open system and not, you yeah. know, get it, you know, tied down. But certainly controversial. I mean, there's a lot of hate out there <laughs> on the Facebook yeah. acquisition. Yeah. And you know what? Most good things start out with like a, a, a lot of mm -hmm. controversy. Yeah. You know, if it was boring and and expected, that's that's not bold. Yeah, it would be worse if everyone said, like, well, who cares? Yeah. Right. Next yeah. up, uh, quirky, fun side story. We um, almost, the Adafruit factory was almost in uh, the quirky space. Oh, yeah, that is a cool space also. Yeah. Over on the west side of Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's west, west, west. We were going we we to we we get the space across, across mm -hmm. from them, but we wanted something different floor. Yeah, more central here floor. in Soho. Yeah. So quirky, giant funded mm -hmm. uh, crowdsource platform for mm -hmm. um, getting your idea out there. Yeah, a really different model. And this one... You know, the community votes and decides what to manufacture, yeah. um, which is interesting. But again, they have hundred, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who communicate or are on that site, and they've made some really good products. We thought it was just a really interesting model, yeah. and, and part of, you know, what he says, his insight was when he invented his first product. It's like, whew, you know, designing the thing was one thing, but like the marketing, the manufacturing, the, you yeah. know, there's a lot more to it. Ahead, ahead of their time because Kickstarter wasn't around. Mm -hmm. So from our, our world, because we're watching hardware projects come through Kickstarter and hardware come through Quirky, which model is going to be the one that has the breakout hit? Cause, yeah. You know. It's interesting that they're, well, they're kind of the mirror image of each other in terms of model yeah. without like getting too far into yeah, it. One, yeah, one, yeah, is, yeah. one is like you DIY and one is they do it for you basically. Right. Bit. One is like you're like give you know and yeah. it's different like one you have to collect the money and you have to back you know fulfill the backers and with with quirky you don't pay until you get it yeah, yeah. So so like which which maker wants to right. it's a different flavor you get to choose yeah one of them is sort of anarchy like well if you like this fund this the other one is more like you know like a big country where we're going to have we're an election yeah. Yeah. you know and, yeah. and a few things yeah. will get through so or organized so yeah, they have not accepted any of my brilliant ideas yet so <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah next up a kickstarter Mark and Jim from Tech Shop. I know Jim Newton uh, really well. Jim um, well, and so uh, this is, as it says in there, like a gym for makers. So you get a membership, and you can go in and use all the equipment. Yeah, totally. And, and all kinds of companies. I mean, Dodo Case is like one company that started out there. I think yeah. Square, you know, started yeah. there. Yeah. So 
you know, that's exactly what it is. If you don't own all the tools and you don't want to invest in them, and maybe if you don't have all the skills, you go to one of these places and pay a monthly fee, go there yeah. every night, you know, and work on stuff. It's a, it's a super idea. This is, this is one of the, um, uh, this is one of my favorite ones that you picked because mm -hmm. this is a really hard thing to pull off. Mm -hmm. So get all this space, yeah. get all this funding, get all this insurance, mm -hmm. get all this equipment. Okay, public. Yeah, come on in and get a membership. And there also there are maker space, lots of maker spaces all over yeah. the place. I think one thing about these guys is they make it very comfortable for people who aren't already in that, those circles yeah. or that movement to also just sort like of show your up. Maker spaces, it's like they don't have stuff. It doesn't always yeah. work, and they don't have. It's not clean. You don't get your own space in your own locker. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. usually it's, it's like you know you have to let other people like mess with your stuff. It's it's a little bit <laughs> yeah. it, like, more anarchistic. Yeah. And next up, Chris Anderson, a friend of ours, former editor in chief of Wired, now CEO of 3D Robotics, recently got around a funding thirty million dollars, and he was on our hardware hangout. And now he's a cover model. Yeah, and like he said, like ball guys are sexy, so we have high <laughs> hopes. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, you know, for, he's, he's a writer, he's written great books about the maker movement and other stuff. Yeah. And he's a former magazine editor, you know, so that's totally inspiring to us. And uh, a good example of somebody who started out doing something as a hobby, really into drones, and then, you know, he talks a lot, he wrote about this for us actually recently. You know, this sort of desktop manufacturing thing allowed him to get, I mean, now they've scaled up, but allowed him to get started. Yeah, yeah. when they you know. started, it was like, okay, buy all this, like, equipment from other places and then add our electronics. It was yeah. very DIY style. Now they're selling, like, a full ready-to-go mm -hmm. quadcopter, but it used to yeah. be, like, you know, we remember for a long time, we're like, hey, we want to carry our stuff, but we have you have to sell it at a point where it's, like, out-of-the-box yeah. experience. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, Oh, we're not going to be there for like two or three years, you know, yeah. it's mm -hmm. a long time. The thing I like about Chris is he actually came to Lemoore's session many, many years ago to Maker Fair. Um, you know, 15, 20 people were there about how to start a kit company. Uh -huh. And he actually mentions, he's like, this is where I thought about margins and did yeah. this. And it just percolated and percolated. And he, he decided to leave a very high profile position as editor-in-chief of Wired. Yeah. And uh, I'm so happy for him because mm -hmm. he's, he spotted Lemoore mm -hmm. very early on. And uh, he was one of the many reasons that she ended up on the cover of Wired. And mm -hmm. then for him to end up on a cover of a magazine pursuing what he wants to do. Yeah. And it somehow connected to hardware mm -hmm. because he maybe really liked this idea of making electronics. Yeah. So cool. What a neat story yeah. that's connected. What we love about the way the maker movement is right now is it's combining you know, digital and physical stuff. So there was so much innovation for a long time in the valley that was all not it was all you know apps basically. Yeah, software. And it's just really cool that people are like you know, like into making physical things again. Yeah. You know, that, you can we do love it that. Too. Okay. All right, next up, uh, one of the open source hardware companies in the list. This is Little Bits. This is Aya. Um, she's been on our show too, and uh, Lamore is friends with her. Um, probably the coolest and easiest way to understand electronics, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I is the kind of the open, the open source venture funded superstar right now. I mm -hmm. think there's not many companies that are open source and took funding. She's one of them. Uh, and she's just so just generally awesome. I'm sitting here next to you. I don't feel like I actually try to describe what the product <laughs> is. I mean, I played with it, but we carry it in the store. Yeah, yeah. it's like this little plug in place. So what 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 made you think that this that she was an innovator, top twenty five? Well. well you know, again, comes back to what she says the mission is. Like, okay, so I design by using cardboard, and I like to put stuff together. And then, you know, electron if there's going to be some electronics thing, like sometime later, somebody will, some engineer will come in, and, and I'll hire somebody to fix that for me. So she wanted to enable people to use electronics the same way they use cardboard and felt and glue and stuff, and just be able to, without knowing much about it, just put them together and use it as another material. And that is an awesome insight. Like, she, and she's just so smart. I mean, she was, like, she compared it to, like, when, you know, cement blocks got to be all the same size, so they're standard or Legos. And doing that with electronics, I just we thought was a huge insight that will enable so many people to do so many cool things. Gotcha. Um, tonight's uh, prize will be the Little Bits Korg and a copy of this issue. So this is a massive Ooh. prize tonight, yeah. So let's keep um, going. Um, the little video, bit, uh, it's also like, I just love playing with Little Bits. I mean, they're just so yeah. awesome. Yeah. So. The, they have this new cloud one coming out soon, uh, which is neat. Um, so do watch the video. Um, we had it here, but um, it's probably better to watch since we're going to be running out of time. We want to 
uh, make sure we get to everyone. Dale Doherty, my old boss, oh, yeah. Maker Media. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was like living in Dale's house for a while. Oh, um, cool, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so you Dale, can't write about the Maker Movement without writing about Dale, yeah, right? I mean, so, so this one is the obvious one, I think. I yeah. mean, kind of um, the dad mm -hmm. for a lot of us to get us... Uh, and uh, dad-like. Yeah, get mm -hmm. us... Um, all together, I think uh -huh. that's Dale's big strength. Is he the Maker Fair? Yeah, the magazine, oh, huge, the hub right? of, uh, of people that are connectors. Yeah, um, he did a great job. Uh, formerly uh, Riley, mm -hmm. did, they did food camp. He did all those hacks books. Always a finger on the pulse mm -hmm. of what the the um, alpha geeks and, yeah. the, and the and the people that are pushing right. the boundaries are doing. So yeah, sometimes guys like that, what they do is is take all these different people who are doing all cool things, and say, hey, you're part of a community. I'm going to show you how. And this is yeah. you know, and that's really important. And uh, one another neat magazine in the spectrum. You know, the, 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 what a magazine is will change mm -hmm. over time. But you know, Popular Mechanics and Make like uh, ones that are already favorites for mm -hmm. for the next generation of engineers. Next up. Moving right along. This is Eric Reese. This is the Lean Startup. Yeah, you know, everybody on this list, well, I don't know, you can tell me if that's true or not, but most people on this list have you know, read his books or at least used his language, and everybody, all of our readers have probably heard of the Lean Startup yeah. and you know, minimal viable product and so on. So just very influential in the way people think about this stuff. Yeah. Um, every time you see any articles about startups, you usually see a quote or mm -hmm. a thing. Yeah. And so it's kind of... Um, like uh, sayings or like chants you do yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. to get a startup going. Uh, next up, this is Peter from Shapeways, another 3D printing company. Yeah, and another company that, again, exists to enable people to do things that yeah. they otherwise would find it really hard Send to do. Send files off to Shapeways. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily... And, they're, yeah. and they're, they have a factory here in New York as well. Yeah, there's one in Queens, there's one in the Netherlands, and... Um, yeah, you can also just buy stuff off. The other, you know, people post things that you, you can just buy that, or you can send your design off to them, and they'll they'll print it for you. All right. Next up, this is Matthew and Tanya. This is from Makers Row. Makers Row is an interesting one that um, I was watching them, and then when I saw them, I got really interested again. So it's basically identify a factory. Yeah, and right? this is really cool. These are, I think, one of the few sort of outliers in terms of you know. Like I said, everybody in this list knows each other, but they seem yeah. to be a little different. One of the reasons for that is they're really involved with makers who are interested in fashion and accessories and stuff. And so some of the things that they're enabling are people to find, you know, someone who could do leather work and so on. Yeah. But what they're really trying to do is make it easy to do small batch manufacturing or, or larger orders in the United States, you know, sometimes in New York, which, you know, is good all around, but also makes it he was another one, actually. There was a, you know, another company that they want to make their own stuff. And they spent so long trying to find manufacturing partners that they were like, well, maybe there's a business here just enabling people to do that. Yeah. We had Brady Forrest on our hardware hangout yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he's at um, Highway1.io. And that's an, an incubator. And they basically connect up with PCH. They're part of PCH, and PCH is just a big list of factories. Mm -hmm. So this that one's one degree off. This one is more like you can put in your own. Like I want Leatherworks, and it has a list of all the, the yeah. There's a whole like series of steps they take you yeah. through to try to match you and stuff. And it's it's um, yeah, it's neat. Yeah. And some of them, the you know people who use them are kind of semi-large companies. Some of them are just you know. Jewelry like, makers. Like yeah. I've seen some yeah. um, so silver soldering or something, or some, yeah. something yeah. cut. Or you know, they don't have the equipment, especially if you're in New York, you don't have space for even the smallest equipment. It's very difficult. And you want me might want to just make a few. Like you might be, I don't know, like my kids' softball team. They all want to have you know the patch stuff. So you can do that sort of thing too. The embroidery. Yeah. 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 Okay. We're getting really close here. Number twenty-three, Jay Rogers, local motors. I've seen these cars. They're like do-it-yourself. Uh, cars you can they're, they're like open yeah the open source car I guess is one of the first this is one of the first yeah. examples of that well they have this community of people contributing ideas car companies don't typically do that I mean the communities exist in companies like yours but for a car company to do that's awesome and then you can go and work on the build of the car like you buy a car yeah. and it's you know partly done and you go to the factory it's like you know well, it's cool it's interesting all right next up one of our favorite companies Danielle from other machine company. Um, the other mill. Right. And Super, we, right? Yeah, we had what, What's cool is so far, it, this is the fourth female engineer from MIT. Yeah. yeah all, within, a, all within three years. 
there is this real MIT mafia. There's something must have been oh, in the yeah. water there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, there is there something in the water there, yes, Lamar, that made yes, all you so yeah. smart or something? It's the Danda noodles. So, and so, you know, 3D printing is um, additive manufacturing, and so that's gotten down to the consumer level. And subtractive manufacturing, huge part of industry, but hasn't really been so affordable and desktop and so on. And so that's what this product is. Yeah. And then Danielle, I mean, so that's why this is here. And then, you know, Danielle's like inspiring and awesome and really cool to talk to. Yeah. And I like that they're doing something different. They didn't just say, let's try to do another 3D printer. They're actually taking on a hard problem. Yeah. And uh, we have one. We're a backer. So. And, they're, and, <laughs> and the next thing, that, you know, they were talking about probably is their next product you know, this would be something similar that would be use, you know, cardboard and exacto knives and be in schools and be really yeah, cheap, yeah, something yeah. you could play with. It's so smart. Yeah. And then, last but not least, we're up to 25. This is Scott Miller Dragon Innovation. And this is, because um, we just had uh, the hardware incubator, um, mm -hmm. I guess, it, which is there in the same category as them, uh, Highway 1.io. This is Dragon Innovation, same thing. They kind of carry your ideas. Yeah, as a and and what they do is is they help people you know who are going to manufacture in Asia, and or just buy part. I mean, there's some you can't buy everything in the United States. So, um, same kind of thing. Like you know, I want to do some manufacturing. I need certain parts and stuff. Oh, and now I have to figure out how China works. That's like a huge hurdle yeah. uh, for a small company. You know, it's no problem if you're a huge company wanting to move in. Um, and so that's what they enable. You know, again, letting people, helping people do things that aren't designed and There's invention. one thing to know, like, oh, this should cost 50 cents to make, and it's another thing to actually make it 50 cents, right? It's just, there's a big gulf mm -hmm. of knowledge and expertise and experience. Yeah. Okay, so this is on stands now. Everyone can get it. Um, don't forget our code is POPMEC. That's 10% off everything in the Adafruit store. Um, one of the uh, cool things, if you go to the newsstands, you'll see the spectrum of magazines and to see Makers celebrated is always nice. When mm -hmm. Lamore was on the cover of Wired, it was um, that vampire movie, things that everyone was at Twilight. Twilight? And uh. then it was Snooki, <laughs> it was Snooki yeah. on a rocket on Rolling mm -hmm. Stone. And then it was Lamore on Wired. And then with this, the, I think it was like whatever prince or princess has a kid. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then I took a photo of and then and then and then Chris Anderson. The prince right is next pregnant. To, right. Something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Who's my, the father? Like, yeah, who knows? There was DNA testing of Prince Charles. Yeah, like, but then, know, and then there's like something yeah, more no substantial like this. Because um, we're pretty much out of time. Um, someone had a really good question that I, I did want to ask, though. If the steam engine was uh, the thing that got us into the industrial revolution, one of the things that helped, or the, the factory. What's the, what's the thing or the tool or the technology that's for the new industrial revolution? What do you think is going to be the symbol for, for like this, this time period right now? I think the symbol is 3D printing. Mm -hmm. It's actually a much really? bigger ecosystem. Wow, okay. Oh, well, actually, you're smarter than I am, so what No, because no, it's, like, <laughs> no, it's, like, it's like, I think of 3D printing as prototyping. I think like robotics and embeddable robotics. Really, you, you like you think embeddable? I, I think I'm gonna go 3D printing. It's the I symbol. I have a reason for it's a symbol. yeah. I mean, the reason that I say that is not that everything's gonna be made that way, but that we're saying the new innovation economy is people being able to prototype and make, s invent stuff, on their desktop. So that and, and that's why it's kind of that desktop manufacturing. Even if you then do go off manufacturing yeah. a different way. Here, so I'm totally yeah, I kind of think like the the. Computers symbolize like desktop publishing. Like yeah. people look back and like 3D printing. Even though like we might not use it because we're in the the pro the pro side of things. But for an individual, I think they might look back at this and say, "Oh, like that's when I noticed that people were making stuff yeah. more and more stuff because well, maybe saw desktop, they saw MakerBot or something." I mean, something. like because like yeah. right now, more than ever, you can embed electronics into any mechatronics into any project. Not just electronics, which was kind of like an 80s technology, but yeah. like actually add like motors and servos and sensors like this kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. like mecha intelligent robot i mean like robotics you, you can see through the external so you're like wow there's finally cheap components and microcontrollers for everything yeah well, I, don't so, know, I guess that was kind of 90s i mean like i don't know what you know i think maybe sensor technology yeah there's more sensor sensors? technology is, is mm. more advanced than ever sensors. okay well Jeez. boys and girls if you're going to bet on this vote <laughs> bet on lady ada <laughs> I don't know. not on the podcast no well but the but thing I is, is yeah. on Oculus rift i mean obviously i'm not i'm, I'm not the, hip the thing the is you, you never know what someone's going to look back 
and say, oh, that that's the thing that I remember when it turned into this new industrial revolution. It yeah. might be the iPhone. It might be right. Square. It actually might be the, right. the Well, see, what we think of, when I say new industrial revolution, I think of like the power to the people thing. And so that desktop manufacturing, and some people are manufacturing. I mean, if it's a small mm. batch thing, I've got a, a side company. I make 10 of these a week, and that's not my main business, but that's cool. Yeah. That, that's the kind of thing that enables. What if they say it's Arduino? Maybe Arduino is the steam Could be engine. Arduino, might yeah. be Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. This is a cool thing. Yeah, simple programming. The 100 yeah. years from now, maybe we'll be around if we upload our brains or something to some other computer. But um, uh, that'll be interesting to look back and say that was one of the yeah. things that you know, it might be Oculus Rift, like, yeah. who knows? Well, you know, <laughs> then there's that whole, like, I also, there's a whole heady science thing, which is a whole, you know, then I'd probably say some kind of biological yeah, biohacking yeah, yeah. thing, but, yeah, you yeah. know, for now. Okay. Okay, so it's now, um, right. it's now trivia question time, folks. It's trivia question time. It's trivia question time. What are the rules, uh, Lady Ada? The rules are if you've won something before, you can't win again, only one winner per lifetime. We have a fabulous prize of... We're going to do makers... And yeah, one copy. And I have a uh, Korg synth. And a Korg little, little bits. Little bit synth. We Which got is, some in and we, we stole yeah. one from ourselves. I'm going to give it to you. But remember, only enter if you've not won before. Yeah. And we will keep track of people and we'll be very upset. Yeah, I have I win. have one as a there's a sample that we played on the show, so I'm gonna be giving that one away. Oh, this is the sample one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, All right, well, that's um, a nice prize. Look, I didn't. I didn't for the symbol of the new industrial revolution, I'm not allowed to say Lady Ada, but I actually think that's what it is. So mm -hmm. that's, you're right. Bet well, on Lady Ada. Yeah, give, I think it's you. You're going to give mm -hmm. me away as the prize? No, no, no. I, I said <laughs> well, the symbol no, the of the, oh. the, the new industrial revolution, I think it might end up being kind of like a person. The secret, no, was, that'd be cool. the secret yeah. was women. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what's I think the. So. Uh, the question is uh, what is the date, time, date, month, day, year? of the first popular mechanics. We talked about this early in the show. Month, hmm. day, so and year just, of the uh, first. Issue one, volume one. Volume one. When did it come Page out? Page one. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, we have it here. And all you pretty much have to do is zoom in and type. That's how, that's how easy this, tr this one's going to be. So I'm going to look at both um, uh, chat windows. And whoever I see it first. Okay. Day. Month. Oh, here it is. Someone already. Helmut Newton, 1 11, 1902. Congratulations, Helmut Newton. Helmut Newton. You yeah. got it. Congratulations. And I like how it says it in front here. Issue April 2014, since 1902. Quality. All right. 900 pages. All right, Helmut Newton, email supportedatafruit.com, and you will get this issue here. And, and a slightly used uh, Korg yeah, kit. Yeah, you'll get these I Korg. I put everything back. It's, it's good to use. Yeah, it's actually okay. more valuable that way if you've it's been used. Uh, I welcome right. my team. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and don't we forget on the, show. the code is uh, popmac, ten percent off all the way to midnight tonight, and uh, we'll be here next week. Next week we're gonna have our Apex Mega coverage. Show. So that's when we went to the manufacturing mm -hmm. conference where yes. we were buying a lot more equipment. We gave Jerry a tour of this place, and then we're gonna do a new product bonanza. We have like. Probably 30 new, products be 30 new products that we've been oh, putting sorry. in. Lamar has been on a tear. Well, I was so. gone, and now I have to catch up. Well, so, I wanted to get in a bunch in before we left, and we left for a week, and yeah. then I wanted to get a bunch in. So uh, that's, when we get back. that's next week's show. And uh, most of all, um, Jerry, thank you so much for being so on, fun. on the show. It was really neat to kind of get an inside view of how and why you selected these things. And uh, uh, I've known folks at Popular Mechanics for a really long time, so it was really good just to show you kind of this weird thing that we do called Adafruit. And, Ask cool. an engineer I'm a show star time. now. I'm so excited that I was <laughs> yeah. on the show. It was awesome. Go back and be like, hey, everybody, I was famous. Yeah. I was on TV. And, and uh, if, you're, TV. if you're a subscriber of Popular Mechanics or you want to be one, I, I put the links in there, and you want to see Popular Mechanics do a live show every week or hangouts, um, we would love to see them so that way we can be on your show. So. <laughs> and you can pick up this issue. It's on stands right now. On new stands right now. Be please make this the most popular purchased Popular Mechanics. I don't know, maybe... Bust the, bust the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Because then they'll know. Because then we'll know to do more of this. Yes. Maker staff is really popular because if they, people don't buy it, then they don't cover it again. Ever. No, that's not true. This is this is, <laughs> this is the heart and soul of the magazine. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then there's robots in here and like whoa, more robots. Wow, this is like a lot of walking robots. Tech floors, shops. Yep. And be projects. best of all, best of all, what I like is you have something for everyone. Actually and actually this one is perfect lawn by summer. Six easy steps. I like mm. to. Eat. <laughs> yeah. Perfect lawn by summer. It's yeah. how to build a bike generator in there for keeping Yeah, for I saw keeping that. Right. Was that. That's an instructional project? Well, yeah, Probably. it was based on adapted, that. We, and we, yeah, adapted. Okay. okay. We'll Thank see you. everybody oh, next week. Here is your moment of Zener. <laughs>